I am I am so grateful. Look at this turnout. I went out and prayed, I turned around, I hid behind the building, I came back and I thought, <laughs> God, God answers prayers and he, he brought a crowd to, to hear this hear this tonight, as Ron and I, so I am very excited, um, I, I'm excited to be able to share the content of, uh, of, this, of this conference tonight, I've been working on it for a while and I've been really looking forward to teaching this, but Whenever you're preparing for a conference like this, whenever, you know, it's been uh, the experience for, for Lily and I that whenever we have prepared for these kinds of conferences, like when we were doing the one on what the Bible says about ghosts and mediums and reincarnation, that sort of thing, and, you know, the enemy came and attacked us physically and emotionally and, and spiritually in so many ways, and, and in, the last, uh, um, in the last month, he has done the same thing to us. And in, in different ways, we have been attacked physically and spiritually in our home. Um, and I, I, I won't even tell you what's been going on because you'll just think I'm crazy and you'll probably leave. But I want to tell you that, and I want to read a scripture to you that will kind of lend itself to this. And I'm, going to, I'm going to share a couple of scriptures with you. And then I've invited Gary and Teresa to open us up tonight with a couple of really wonderful songs. And I know I, don't, I haven't normally done that uh, because... Uh, we like to, I know I was, I was asked some time, well, many years ago, when we first started these conferences, I said, well, we just, just get into the Word. But you know what? The praise and worship that, that uh, when we bring praise and worship to the Lord, I really believe that the Holy Spirit just takes us by the heart hand and just leads us into the presence of the Lord and to just prepare our hearts for the, for the Word of God. So I am so blessed. And they were singing this one song one Sunday morning. I said, the Lord just spoke to my heart and said, have them sing that at the conference, and so, yes, and I'd ask them, and they said, well, maybe, if you pay me enough, <laughs> they, they, they said yes, <coughs> they said yes, and uh, as they always do, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come, for men, now think about our day, the day we live in, as I read this to you, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. You know, that's in there. It seems so minor, but in that first century when that was written, that was a capital offense. You could be put to death for being disobedient or dis, uh, not honoring your mother and father. Disobedient to, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Oh, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hmm. You know, you would have read this 10 years ago and you would have thought, yeah, well, glad we don't live in those days. <laughs> but you know, ten, just in 10 years, just in a, a few short years, our world has turned around. And I don't mean turn around the right way. I mean, it's turned around. It's, it's um, you know, I would say that we are on a grease sled that you know where. And, and we have to stand up as believers and get into the Word of God, learn the Word of God, and then we can really understand what God said, that if my people who are called by my name uh, would pray and turn from their wicked ways, that I would, I would hear them from heaven. I'm paraphrasing. And I would heal their land. And aren't we looking for our land to get healed? Amen. Amen. But in Romans, we were, we were warned that God will turn us over to the base thinking, our the base mind, if we don't change. If our country or if, our, if the people don't change. He says we're without excuse because He is everywhere. He is, you know, he is evident in everything that is created. He is evident um, that we are without excuse. And, um, you know, we have, we have lost our way. And I think the primary reason that we have lost our way is because we've lost sight of the way. We don't understand. We, we have lost track of the gospel and, uh, and of the whole Word of God. And I'm not saying you in this room. I'm just saying our pe the people in our country, the people in our world in general. So the reason I'm teaching this tonight and tomorrow night, Christianity, cults, the occult, 
and I added another section to this. That's why your your binders are so thick of uh, Christianity cults and other religions or religions to take a look at what Jesus warned us about. And I'll tell you about his warning in just a moment. I want to pray and then invite Gary and Therese to come up and just bless us with uh, these songs, these two songs tonight. Our Father, we come to you with praise and thanksgiving. We praise you for who you are and we thank you for every wonderful blessing that you bring to us from heaven. Lord, without you, we have no way. But I fear that we have lost our way, Lord, and we're asking now tonight that you would speak into our hearts tonight and that you would show us the things that we must know that as believers, we need to take into the dark world, into this lost world, and to help our brothers and our sisters and our, our, our loved ones and our, our co-workers and the people that we interact with every day. We need to show them that the narrow gate isn't just a narrow-mindedness, and it's not just an arrogance of our way or no way, but it's a narrow gate, it's a narrow-mindedness because it is a narrow gate, and it's a, arrogance is confused it's urgency that, that we have been commanded to bring the Word of God to a, to a fallen world before it's too late. Before it's too late for an individual in their lifetime and before it's too late for our world and for humanity. You're giving us so much time to, to repent. And yet even, even back in Genesis 6 at the flood, you gave them 120 years to repent and they, they failed to do that. But you said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be again at the coming of the Son of Man. Are we there again, Lord? Are you coming that soon? Are, are we failing to repent? Are we lost? Well, we know that believers are not. But what about this world? What about those that are perishing? Can't we get the Word of God out to them in time that they might find the truth and find their way into the kingdom of God? Lord, give us all that we need to be able to Spread the word that we might empty out hell and fill up heaven with people that you have created, that you have longed and that you have loved and that you have sent your son to die so that they would find heaven. And I pray that it starts here tonight for us, that we might understand the dangers that are at hand, that we might be able to share and to warn those that might be practicing such things that they are perishing. So I thank you for tonight. I thank you for each one who is here. And I know that each one here represents a hundred more that aren't here. And so, Lord, help us to get the word uh, correctly and rightly divided tonight that uh, uh, it will leave this room and it will multiply and never return void. Thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Gary, three seconds. Hi. Welcome to Anderson Community Church. For everybody that's new and everybody that's not new, we just thank you for coming to Pastor Honey's conference. And um, when Pastor Honey asked us to sing some songs, I thought about it because we never sung at a conference before that it actually makes sense um, based on the topic that he's speaking about tonight, that we would sing songs that glorify and magnify and lift up the Lord. Um, help our hearts and our minds to remember who he is in the face of learning about the occults and the evil things that we remember to keep um, what he did for us on the cross and in the forefront of our minds and our hearts. Um, if you know the song, you're welcome to sing with us and give us a clap. We're going to sing this a cappella. <coughs> give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord For He is good For He is good I Give thanks to the Lord For He For He is good I Give thanks to the Lord For He is good For He is good His love endures forever Everybody give thanks to the Lord
Thanks, Gary. Glad you could come. You gonna stay? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to say that because Gary on this night usually that Gary and Teresa are usually preaching the word of God at the at the Good News Rescue Mission. So they gave that up to be here. So thank you for blessing us with your incredible voices and the praise and the worship. Amen. All right, well, welcome to Christianity Cults and the Occult and uh, the additional other religions. Um, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to go through. We have a testimony from a dear friend as well that we're going to hear hear from uh, tonight. And, and I'll, I'll share that with you in just a little bit. I want to share with you out of Matthew 24. I mentioned earlier that Jesus said in Matthew 24 that just as it was in the days of Noah, so it would be at the coming of the Son of Man. And you've heard that from me from several conferences because I, I, I'm preaching a lot about these end days and what these days are like and what it means to us in this generation. And I will go out on a limb even on the onset of this thing and say that I believe, and I have good company too, but I believe that Jesus is returning in our lifetime. I am that serious about um, looking into Scripture and recognizing the fulfillment of prophecy to give us a, a, an actual bead on the, on the timetable of the, um, prophetic, uh, prophet, the, <laughs> the prophetic word. And the reason I say that, and let me, let me clarify something. I am, not, I am not date setting. I will never do that. We know not the day or the hour that the Lord will return. And we were told that only the, only the Father in heaven knows that day. But Jesus admonishes us to understand the signs of the times. And so when we begin to explore in the Bible the signs of the times and we see the things that are going on, especially in the last few centuries, um, compare that to the last few millennia, but the last few centuries we've seen some things come about, some things happen, that are really pointing towards the Lord's return, and that that uh, that timing, that point, that you know, from 200 years ago down to 100 years ago, it's really began to focus on today, and what the Lord is doing, and what what's happening in our world, and how you can have the Word of God in one hand and a newspaper in the other, and keeping up with the current events of the world, and see what's going on, and how it lines up with the, you know, it is no coincidence because there are no such thing in Christendom. It's all the uh, prophecies that God that God laid out for us. He told us the whole story. And uh, I had a lady at work today. I was, I was in her office doing something. And she said, wait a minute, come back here. I need to ask you a question. And she was concerned about the election. I'm not going to go into all of that. But she said she was scared about the election. I think a lot of people are because they don't know they don't know what to do. And they're looking at they're looking at bold people in the mainstream of the election and they don't they just don't know what to do. And she said, I'm scared. And so what I try to encourage her with is first of all, don't be scared. We don't need to fear as believers because we know that no matter what an election will bring about, no matter what the what will happen in the world Jesus is on the throne. Amen. No matter what religions or cults or occult things are happening around us, as believers, we need to remember every day that Jesus is on the throne and that Satan has no power over any of us except for what we empower him with by believing Amen. his lie. Amen. So we don't believe his lie. We, we cast him off in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we have great peace in that. But you know, we get caught up in the rhetoric. We get caught up in the lies sometimes. Because, uh, well, after all, we live in a politically correct world. And to be politically correct is to side with Satan. And that gets a little scary. So do we do what's right? Do we do what's wrong? Do we rebel against the world? Do we, what, where, where, what do we do? And so what I want to talk about is basically a couple of things that Jesus warned us against. And then how it's really coming about today. Also in Matthew 24... He says in, uh, in verse 4, beginning in verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. Now I've said this before, I think I said this in the last conference, and I say, I say it again, that in the last 17 years that I've worked for the Good News Rescue Mission, in the first four, 15 years, not one person told me they were Jesus. But in the last two years, at least a dozen have said that they were Jesus Christ, that they were the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. So in the last two years, as opposed to the last 17 years, people are coming out of the woodwork and saying that they're declaring that they are Jesus. And these aren't 
just drug addicts or people that are, you know, that nobodies. These are real people that are really deceived, maybe through the spirit of pharmakia, which, which Satan is very, very um, known for. Um, but whatever it is, they're, he's bringing about a real belief that you know, somebody is uh, Jesus Christ. And that's a little disconcerting, especially when you see the anger in, when you show them where they are in Scripture. No, this is where you are. This is what you're saying this. And they become very angry. He says, um, says, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because of lawlessness, or because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Well, doesn't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. We live in a lawless world today. And the, and the love of many is growing cold today. We see these things happening all around us. In verse 23, he says, Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is Christ, the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See? I have told you beforehand. I love that. See? I have told you beforehand. And then finally, I wanted to share out of Matthew 16... When I was in Israel some years ago, I, one of the places that I visited was a place called Caesarea Philippi. And this was an area um, of past pagan worship. And when you go into this area, there, there are these rock uh, walls around it. And in these carved in these rock walls are these altars where there once stood um, icons or idols that are carved out of rock or carved out of wood. And in the day, in the day that Jesus was there, that they would have been uh, many gods represented, but the main God that was represented by the way, God with a little g, false God, would have been the God Pan. Uh, just another satanic idol. That they worshipped him. But Jesus took his disciples to this place in the midst of all of this pagan worship, and then he, he sets them up and he says, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And it was appropriate that he said that, or he asked that question right there. And he said, uh, they answered, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. And so Jesus focuses the question, he, he, he turns to Peter, and he says, but who do you say that I am? Now, Peter was the one that God chose to show this to, because Peter would be, um, would have no uh, inhibitions to, not speak, to speak up, and he said, uh, and Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, without even hesitating. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, no one had told him that, and that's exactly what Jesus revealed. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. That name always just tickles me, because it always sounds like a, um, kind of a superhero name. <laughs> Simon Barjona, maybe the enemy of underdog. <laughs> Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And he says something else that kind of starts the ball rolling in terms of uh, uh, false ideas, <coughs> misunderstandings. He says, and I also say that you are Peter. Well, what he said was, is that you are Petros, uh, which means stone, little stones. And he says, uh, you are Petros. And on this Petra, he says, this rock, I will build my church. And so many believe that he said that on Peter, I will build my church. And so Peter was then given the title of the first pope. Well, nothing is further from the church, uh, the truth, nothing's further from the church either. But if you, get, if you would go back and do some research on, on the popes, you know, they would come around until you know, maybe the 15th century. And Peter was never in Rome at any rate. That's why Paul went to Rome. But he says to Peter, you are... Petros, these little stones, and on this massive rock, Petra, this massive rock, Christ. Remember in uh, uh, Daniel when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream of the statue that represented all of those kingdoms, and, and then at the end of that there was this massive stone that was cut, cut out without hands, and it came crashing down at the feet of the statue, just obliterating the statue until it was ground down to dust and just blown away as chaff in the wind. <laughs> 